Hello, it's Patrick here from the garageguide.com. Whether you're a vocalist, rapper, podcaster, or voiceover artist, you're going to want to use GarageBand to record your voice at some point. In this video, I'm going to share three ways that you can record your voice into GarageBand on Mac. Every single Mac model, bar the Mac Mini, has a built-in microphone somewhere on its chassis. On my iMac, for example, the built-in microphone sits right above the built-in camera. On different Mac models, the position of that built-in microphone will vary. The sound quality you'll get from your Mac's built-in microphone isn't going to sound all that professional, really, but it can work in a pinch. You will lose a lot of frequencies when you record using the built-in microphone, and it can leave your voice sounding a little thin. Here are some examples. Okay, this is what the built-in microphone on my Mac sounds like. It's not great, really. Untreated, the vocal sounds pretty tinny. There's not a lot of frequencies to work with. You could probably get by using this for things like a Zoom call or something like that, but you probably wouldn't want to use it in your studio or your projects. I've tried to add a little bit of post-processing here, some compression and EQ, stuff like that, to make it sound or to try and make it sound a bit better. There's not really much you can do to improve the quality of your inbuilt microphone, really. It's just not that great, to be honest. The USB microphone market has exploded in recent years. The rise in popularity of streaming, YouTube and home recording has meant the simplicity of the USB microphone's plug and play setup is a great solution for many, especially beginners. You have a lot of choice when it comes to choosing a USB microphone. Brands like Blue, Apogee and Audio Technica make great microphones that will give you a vastly superior recording when compared to your Mac's built-in microphone. The Blue Snowball is a budget USB microphone that strikes a good balance between sound quality, build quality, and affordability. The Samson G-Track Pro, on the other hand, is a more premium USB microphone that gives you a lot of features that you won't find on the cheaper Blue Snowball. Here are some examples of the kind of sound quality you can expect from these two USB microphones. This is what the Blue Snowball Ice microphone sounds like, with no effects or anything like that added. This is just the raw audio recorded into GarageBand, then I've exported it and slapped it into this video. As you can hear, it does sound a little bit thin and does lack maybe some of that oomph that you might want in a finished product. And you're now hearing what the Blue Snowball Ice USB microphone sounds like with a bit of compression and EQ thrown into the mix. Now this definitely helps to bring out the best of this microphone before it sounded a little thin, whereas with a bit of post-production you can really make up for some of this mic's shortcomings and leave it sounding actually quite nice. And this is what the Samson G-Track Pro USB microphone sounds like. Again, I haven't added any post-processing to this audio. It's just been recorded straight into GarageBand and then exported out into this video. And you can hear that the G-Track does sound quite a bit better than the Snowball out of the box. And this is what the Samson G-Track Pro USB mic sounds like after I've added some EQ and compression to it. Again, this makes the mic sound a lot better, a lot more well-rounded, and something you could definitely use in a professional setting. I think it sounds great, especially for a USB microphone. The final way to record your voice in GarageBand is with an XLR microphone and an audio interface. By far the best way to get the highest quality vocal recordings possible, you again have a huge amount of choice 
when it comes to choosing an interface and microphone. From more budget-friendly single input interfaces to multi-input behemoths, the sky really is the limit when it comes to choosing your interface. I use a second generation Focusrite Scarlett 2i4. It's compact, it has all the input and output options I need, and it sounds great. Other popular interfaces of this type include the Presonus Audio Box, the Behringer Euphoria 202, and the M Audio Air. All of these come in at around the $80 to $100 or pound mark. Now, I'm going to set myself up for some heat in the comments section here, I think, by declaring that in order to get the best quality vocals possible, you're going to want to get yourself a condenser microphone as opposed to a dynamic microphone. While you do need an interface that provides 48 volt phantom power to run a condenser microphone, the vast majority of interfaces nowadays have that feature as standard. Yes, you absolutely can use a dynamic microphone like the Shure SM57 to record a great sounding vocal, but a condenser microphone will not only capture everything in crispy, crystal clear detail, it will also generally be more flexible in a studio setting and will ultimately give you better results when you come to mix your project. In the following example, I'll use a Rode NT1 condenser microphone and a knockoff Shure SM57 type dynamic microphone attached to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4. This is what the Rode NT1 condenser microphone sounds like attached to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i4. It'll probably sound quite familiar because the rest of this video has been recorded using this microphone and this interface. Sounds great, super clean, sounds even better when you add some post-production. And this is the Rode NT1 condenser mic with some post-production added. Sounds fantastic, well-rounded, nice and deep with some good clear highs as well. If I had to recommend you one condenser microphone to buy, I would probably suggest this one. And this is what the Shure SM57-ish dynamic microphone sounds like without any post-processing added. It's a little bit flat, lacks a bit of punch. Um, dynamic microphones are really good for live performance and for micing up amplifiers and stuff like that. I personally don't rate them for recording vocals, really. And this is what the dynamic microphone sounds like with some post-processing added. Adding a bit of compression and EQ can actually make a dynamic mic sound pretty good. I still wouldn't choose to use it over a condenser microphone, but if you do decide to go down the dynamic microphone route, it's good to know that you can get it sounding good in post. So there you have it. That's three ways that you can record your voice in GarageBand for Mac. If you're just getting started with GarageBand on Mac or just want a refresh on the basics, you can grab my 40-page GarageBand quick start guide absolutely free. I'll put a link to that down below. You'll find links to all of the gear mentioned in this video down there as well. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Seven to record. My lamp, my lamp's gone. Oh no.